Moving on to the latest in the case of uh, slain Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. America's intelligence agency, the CIA, has concluded that Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman ordered Khashoggi's killing. The Washington Post reported that so far, this is the most definitive in linking Khashoggi's murder to Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. The Post's report states that a team of 15 Saudi agents did indeed fly to Istanbul on a government aircraft in October. The hit squad then proceeded to kill Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. The Washington Post report also states that Mohammed bin Salman's brother, Khalid bin Salman, the Saudi ambassador to the United States of America, spoke with Khashoggi over the phone and assured him that going to the Saudi consulate would be safe. Responding to the Washington Post's accusation, Ambassador Khalid bin Salman in a Twitter post said that the Washington Post did not print Saudi Arabia's full response. In the response letter, Saudi Arabia had mentioned that Ambassador Prince Khalid never had any telephonic conversation with Khashoggi. He also said that the Washington Post is free to check phone records and cell phone content to corroborate this. Khalid bin Salman said that the last contact he had with Khashoggi was via text on the 26th of October 2017, nearly a year before the journalist's death. Meanwhile, speaking on the sidelines of the APEC summit in Papua New Guinea, U.S. Vice President Mike Pence made a statement after the report emerged and has vowed that the U.S. would hold the murderers of Jamal Khashoggi to account. The reports are so far the most damning for Saudi Arabia that has consistently denied reports of the Crown Prince being involved in the murder of the 59-year-old Jamal Khashoggi. And now we have Ahmed Alioglu, TRT journalist live from Istanbul. Uh, Ahmed, uh, thank you so much uh, for taking time to be this year on We On uh, World Is One. So far, we've seen that Saudi Arabia has been in a denial mode and only when pushed to the absolute corner, it admitted to Khashoggi's killing in the first place. And this is from no less than an investigation conducted by the CIA. How do you see Turkey responding to this? Well, Turkey is just looking for the truth. And they were putting more pressure on the international community by embarrassing them, giving them a chance to look at the audio recordings that they have. The U.S., Canada, Germany, the U.K., and France intelligence community did have a look at the audio recordings, including a seven-minute details of the killing, the murder that happened inside the consulate, and another 15-minute recording, and that contains what we know as the uh, kind of uh, the premeditation, or it was a pre-planned uh, crime that the team was planning to carry out. So uh, Turkey is just looking for justice. It's a violation of its own sovereignty. It's a violation of international community on Turkish soil. That's why it will not back down until the one who was responsible for the killing, who gave the order, is revealed. And it seems now the CIA concluded that it was Mohammed bin Salman, MBS, the crown prince of Saudi Arabia. And as Mike Pence said, everybody who is responsible must be held accountable. Now it's time for actions to be louder than words. If he was the one who gave the order, then we have to say some um, genuine measures on the ground, maybe sanctions, maybe Mohammed bin Salman should depart from being the crown prince, and we never see him as a king of Saudi Arabia, because this would put the values of the West on the stake, whether it's arms deals, it's business money relations with Donald Trump and his son-in-law, Jared Kushner, with the Saudi family, or it's the values of the West. Right. Uh, now, Khalid bin Salman, the, US, the Saudi ambassador to the U.S., has hit out of the Washington Post uh, for not publishing Riyadh's side of the story, so to speak. Do you think there's more to it than what meets the eye? Khalid bin Salman is the brother of Mohammed bin Salman, the crown prince, and he's the ambassador in Washington. He denied that he has any contact with Jamal Khashoggi. But according to the report of the Washington Post, because what he said 
said that he, the last time he talked to him was on the 26th of October 2017 via text messages. And it was a cordial conversation where he asked him to go back to Saudi Arabia. As Mohammed bin Salman is trying to promote the idea of bringing back all the dissidents peacefully. But on the other hand, the CIA intercepted some phone calls between him, Khalid bin Salman, and Khashoggi, where he convinced him to go to the consulate of Saudi Arabia in Turkey to finish some paperwork for the marriage of Jamal Khashoggi from Khadija Jengiz here in Turkey. And that's what happened. Jamal Khashoggi came here a week before he was killed, and the embassy told him to uh, come back on Tuesday, the 2nd of October, where he left to London to attend the conference and came back on the 2nd of October. As they told him, he entered the consulate and he was killed brutally, dismembered, his body was dissolved in acid, and the murderers, the criminals, are the, uh, the head squad that believed to be part of them, including Maher al mutrib who is the leader of the team, is from the inner circle of Mohammed bin Salman. One of them was a forensic expert, and lots of them from the security guards of Mohammed bin Salman. Even the uh, aircraft that they use belongs to MBS, the Crown Prince. So all the uh, suspicions, all the blames were to be on Mohammed bin Salman, who is the de facto later of Saudi Arabia, who is the one who take any measure uh, on the ground. And now the CIA is putting it very clear striking facts we have all the leaks we've been dealing with now are turning to be clear and the saudi narrative does not hold water the international community is not satisfied turkey is not satisfied it's not so convincing ahmed ali oglu of uh, trt world uh, please stay with us because we have breaking news that's coming in at this point in time u.s president donald trump has said that he had not yet been briefed on the cia's conclusions regarding the murder of Saudi General Jamal Khashoggi, but that he would speak with the Secretary of State, Mike Pompeo, and the CIA about the issue later on Saturday. That's the latest coming in after the Washington Post report on a CIA investigation that directly links Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman to the murder of Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul. Now, Donald Trump, U.S. President, has said that he is not aware and that he will be speaking to the CIA and, more importantly, Secretary of State uh, Mike Pompeo. Uh, Ahmed Alioglu of uh, TRT World is with us. Ahmed, uh, how do you view that? Uh, the U.S. President does not know what the CIA has been investigating and what its findings are. Yeah, jokes are circulating a lot, and it seems they will stay. I president like Donald Trump is still there with this kind of uncertainty, no communication between his own organizations, and then they blame the, uh, the other countries. But anyway, what's interesting, to be honest, was the statements of Adil Jubeir a couple of days ago. He was the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia who quoted a John Bolton. Uh, the senior, the uh, security, the advisor, the national security advisor of Donald Trump, where he said that Mohammed bin Salman, this is what John Bolton said, Mohammed bin Salman is not involved in the crime. That, that was the quote of the foreign minister of Saudi Arabia. And now we have the CIA report concluding that it's Mohammed bin Salman who gave the order. So you have these two conflicting entities in the United States. Uh, who to believe, I don't know whether he is going to buy into the uh, narrative of uh, the intelligence community, which is the CIA. Pompeo used to be the, chief, the former chief of the CIA, and he should be responding to that. And we understand that the CIA would not come out with this kind of report and jeopardizing its credibility in a very easy way. Now, the, the question remains whether the camp of Jared Kushner, the son-in-law, Trump, and Bolton will prefer or the new Congress with the Democrats would practice more pressure to let the values of freedom of speech, uh, freedom of lives, the journalists' lives are on the stake. And will they let this be jeopardized with the reckless uh, kind of um, a business a, a mind, business kind of, you know, dealing with the states 
or a statesman mentality where still human rights, uh, journalist lives are more important than business deals. Right. Ahmad Alioglu, I also wanted to ask you, do you think Turkey's President Recep Tayyip Erdogan will use this latest report to go for the jugular and demand uh, the ouster of uh, Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman? Look, what Turkey is adopting is a very clear tactic, which is a drip, drip tactics and leaks to the media outlets, local media outlets, international media outlets, for two reasons, to involve more partners in the international community uh, in order not to keep it Turkey, Saudi Arabia kind of conflict. It's international community who is it should be interested in exposing all the uh, secrets of a killing of a famous, well-known journalist. And on the other hand, you have Turkey trying to push the Saudis with these leaks uh, to confess, to admit the crime and come out with a solid narrative. It's, it could be Mohammed bin Salman who is the one who gave the order. And in this case, it's Saudi Arabia. The family of Saudi Arabia should not jeopardize the whole country for the sake of one man. He is not the only one that the Saudis have. They could have other ones like a crown prince or a king. And it's up to them to decide. Otherwise, otherwise there uh, should be some sanctions. The international community is not so happy and the repercussions they cast that, uh, dark shadows on the relations between Saudi Arabia and the whole international community. That's something I don't feel that the Saudi family would be happy to have. And that also means that there will be pressure building on the U.S. Uh, from around uh, the countries in the world, the international community, because, uh, you know, it's for the U.S., which is a big decision because it has multi-billion dollar arms deals uh, with Saudi Arabia to take any action. That's the reason why you've seen them, you know, being wishy-washy about what to do with this entire Khashoggi, Khashoggi investigation. But this is, this is big. This is the CIA's investigation, and it's being reported by one of the biggest newspapers in the U.S., well, to be honest, Donald Trump doesn't care, you know, even if it was Mohammed bin Salman himself, for sure, as a matter of fact, is proven that he was the one who gave the order with, with blood on his hand. Donald Trump publicly stated that we, he's not going to abandon more than $400 billion deals with Saudi Arabia and more than uh, 1 million jobs for the United States. States. Uh, he said publicly that if they don't, if they don't, the Saudis don't buy the uh, the, the American warships, uh, they're going to buy it from Russia, from China, which is something that Donald Trump will not allow it to happen. Now the question is whether the, the relationship between Saudi Arabia and the United States is well established. And I don't believe that Mohammed bin Salman is the one who is maintaining this relation. So it's up to them to decide to keep the relation with the state or with the individual. Ahmed Alioglu of TRT World joining us for this big breaking news update on the killing of Jamal Khashoggi. Thank you so much, Ahmed Alioglu, for being with us.